There are four major self-defeating behaviors that I see play out amongst all high performers that are trying to achieve their goals. The first one is self-sabotage, where they have some results, then they screw it up somehow and cut down all their results and then they go back to where they were before. The second is unfulfillment, where they create massive success and then when they get there, they realize that this is not actually what they wanted. The third is procrastination, where you and I both know what that is, where you know what you need to be doing and you do every single other thing but that task. And the fourth one is self-doubt. I see this play out so much amongst people that are really trying to create their dream life. And in this episode, I wanna be breaking out exactly why self-doubt actually happens, how you can combat it, and then how you can actually take control of it and make sure that you destroy self-doubt once and for all. In a world that's so distracting with 20 year olds driving Lamborghinis and wearing Rolexes and traveling all around the world, we're all glued to our phones, living a life of comparison, trying to create worlds with people trying to show off to strangers and people that they don't even know, like it's one massive dick measuring contest. But what it really does is create massive self-doubt and insecurities in the majority of people who look at their lifestyles and only see the glory but don't have any idea what's actually happening behind closed doors. Leading people to a life of massive self-doubt overwhelm and then ultimately taking them out of the game. I've seen it time and time again, amazing people get defeated by life because they compare themselves to other people that they don't even know on the internet and then talk themselves out of doing the thing that they want to do. So in order for us to really combat this, we've got to understand a few things first. The first thing being, we got to understand where it even comes from. I've traveled over 50 countries and two of the countries I've been to and two of one of my most favorite countries is Indonesia and Fiji, but specifically Bali of Indonesia. Now, both of these places are third world countries, but both of these places have, in my opinion, some of the happiest people I've ever met in my entire life. But they don't have much compared to the average Westerner. All these 20 year olds flashing their Lambos and Rolexes. And I've done some digging into this and I found that there was actually a study done and what they've shown is that the more choices we have in life, the more chances we actually have of being unhappy. So unhappiness actually comes from having too many options, AKA comparison or looking at other people and thinking that the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. I met Lisa Nichols, one of the top motivational speakers in the entire world when I was 21 years old and she said to me, and I told her that I was having all of this doubt and I was comparing myself to a lot of other people. And she stopped me, she said, Morgan, comparison is the thief of all joy. And I never forget that moment. And of course, I do my absolute best to not compare anymore, but it's still a very common thing. So the self-doubt comes massively from when we're comparing our results to someone else's results. And quite often, we'll always compare our chapter 10 to someone's chapter 30, when in fact, if we started comparing our chapter 10 to someone's chapter one, we would probably feel a lot more confident in ourselves. But us as humans, and especially high achievers, we don't usually do that because that's what also keeps us hungry. We're a little bit sick in the head. But the second biggest reason where self-doubt comes from is this. We have a stack of evidence of not doing the thing that we said we were going to do. So if you have in the past not stuck to your word when you said that you were gonna do something, what happens is your unconscious mind stacks this up as a little piece of evidence and it remembers this time. This plays in with our self-worth and our own self-esteem. So the next time you say, hey, I wanna accomplish this big goal and the self-doubt creeps in, it creeps in because it remembers the time you said that you were gonna to go to the gym every single day and you didn't go to the gym every single day. So it creates doubt in your own behavior that you're not someone that does the things that it said it was going to do. So then you've lived an entire life of built up evidence and proof of someone who does what's easy when they know they should have done what was a little bit hard right now. So what do we do about it then? The first thing is we've got to reframe how we actually view self-doubt. So when self-doubt's creeping up for me, I actually look at it as a signal to know that I'm on the right track. Because if I was totally confident and totally certain in my ability of the thing that I was about to do, I could only feel like that if I had already done something like that in the past, which if I do have those feelings of confidence and certainty right now, in my eyes, I'm not playing hard enough. Every single time I experience self-doubt, it's a signal to me to know that I'm on the right track and I'm doing something again that is hard, it's unfamiliar, it's unconfident, and it's something that I haven't yet built evidence in my ability to complete. So I welcome it, I love it, I see it as a signal, because it tells me that this is scary, this is uncomfortable, this is unfamiliar, but we all know that things that are a little scary, a little bit uncomfortable, are the only things that help us actually grow. 
The second step is we're going to start to develop evidence of doing things that are a little bit hard. A Navy SEAL doesn't doubt himself when he goes into combat in a new building that he hasn't been to yet. Why? Because of all the past bits of evidence that he has stacked in his favor tells him that he is a badass, that he trusts himself and knows what to do in any situation that might occur. Because they've stacked so much evidence of past drills, missions, and every single day they keep doing things that are hard. So when a new thing that's hard comes up, they have a library in their brain of evidence that tells them that of course you can do this, you're certain, you're confident because you are someone who does shit that is hard. Self-doubt really just creeps in from having a lack of discipline. If someone's very disciplined in themselves, then they have a lot of self-esteem. If someone's very disciplined, they have a lot of self-trust and self-trust is the opposite of self-doubt. Someone who completely trusts themselves doesn't experience self-doubt. They might sometimes think, I'm not sure if I can do this, but instantly in a moment after, they're like, I don't know if I can do this, but I trust in my ability to do my absolute best. And even if it's hard, I'm gonna be able to do it anyway. So start to collect evidence from the past of doing things that were a little bit hard at the time. So you can start to reinforce this ideology in yourself that you're someone who does things that are hard. And the third one, this is the most important, but you've just got to get into action. Because here's the thing, the less you do, the more you think. The more you think, the more you doubt, the more you doubt, the less you do. So when you're in lack of action, you have a lot of time to actually think. And the more you think, the more you doubt, the more you doubt, the less you even do. So it's a downward cycle. And eventually you're sitting on the couch, watching Netflix, procrastinating, doing nothing now, talking yourself out of the game. It all started from a lack of certainty in yourself. But certainty comes from taking action because the more you do, the less you think. The less you think, the less you doubt, the less you doubt, the more you do. Perfect example, when I skydive and I jump out of an airplane and I'm falling a thousand feet every five seconds, I am not thinking about anything else except survival and where I am in that very moment. I'm not thinking about work, my partner, what I'm doing tomorrow, what I screwed up yesterday. I don't have time. Why? Because I'm moving so fast. And the most successful people I've met, they don't experience self-doubt because they are too freaking busy to doubt themselves. They keep moving. They have a very busy schedule. To get booked on my schedule is very hard because every single day for me is absolutely jam-packed, minute to minute. I know exactly what I'm doing weeks in advance and I like it like that because I do not have time to ever experience self-doubt. I just keep doing the thing and I trust in myself. When doubt does come up, I trust in my own ability to move through it. Every single time I coach somebody who says, I have self-doubt, I say, show me your calendar. And every single time it's been almost empty. That there is the biggest problem. Empty space on your calendar gives you a lot of time to think, a lot of time to overthink, analyze, doubt yourself, and then do nothing about it. So set yourself a new goal, set yourself an action plan, and fill up your days with proper activity so you just become someone who does the shit every single day, even if it's a little bit hard, and over time, you're gonna start to stack a lot of evidence, develop more confidence, develop more trust, and you won't even have time to look at what other people are doing on social media because you'll be too busy doing what you're doing, fully focused, fully confident, and crushing all your goals. If you got value from this episode, do the things, like it, subscribe it, and share this episode with a friend. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, go out there and dream out loud.